so today we'll be talking about storing utf8 encoded text with strings we we'll talk about strings in chapter 4 but we'll look at them in more depth now now rust stations commonly get stuck on strings for a combination of three reasons rust uh, propensity for exposing possible errors string being a more complicated data structure than many programmers give them the credit for and utf8 these factors combine in a way that can seem difficult when you are coming from other programming language we discuss strings in context of collection because strings are implemented as a collection of bytes plus some methods to provide useful functionality when those bytes are interpreted as text in this section we will talk about the operations on string that every collection type has such as creating updating and reading we will also discuss the way ways in which string is different from the other collection namely how indexing into a string is complicated by the differences between how people and computers interpret a string data what is a string we will first define uh, what we mean by the term string rust has only one string type in the core language which is the string slice str that is uh, usually seemed in its borrowed form ampersand str that is called a slice string in chapter 4 we talked about string slices which are uh, reference to which are references to some utf8 encoded string data stored elsewhere string literals for example are stored in the program's binary and are therefore string slices string type which is borrowed by a rush standard library rather than coded into the core language is a growable mutable owned utf8 encoded string type when rustation refers to strings in rush they might be referring to either the string or the string slice ampersand str types not just one of those types although this section is largely about string both types are used heavily in rush standard library and both string and string slices are utf8 encoded creating a new string many of the same operations available with vec t are available with string as well because string is actually implemented as a wrapper around a vector of bytes with some extra guarantees restrictions and capabilities an example of a function that works the same way with vec t and string is the new function to create an instance shown in listing 8-11 let mute s string colon colon new this line creates a new empty string called s which can then load data into often we call uh, some initial data uh, that we want to start the string with for that we will use the two string method which is available on any type that implements the display trait as string literals do listing 8-12 shows two example let data equal to initial content let s equal to data dot to string let s equal to initial contents dot to string this code creates a strong con string containing initial contents we can also use the function string colon colon from to create a string from a string literal the code in listing 8-13 is equivalent to the code from listing 8-12 that uses two string let s equal to string colon colon from initial contents because strings are used for so many things we can use many different generic apis for string providing us with a lot of options some of them can seem seem redundant but they all but they all have their place in this case the string colon from and two string does the do the same thing so which you choose is a matter of style and readability remember that strings are utf8 encoded so we can include any property encoded properly encoded data in them as shown in listing 8-14 okay all of this are valid string values updating a string a string can grow in size and its content can change just like the contents of a vector t if you push more data into it in addition you can conveniently use the plus operator or the format macro uh, to concatenate string values appending to a string uh, with push str and push we can grow a string by using the push str method to append a string slice as shown in listing 8-15 let mute s equal to string colon colon from foo h dot push str bar 
after these two lines s will concatenate foo bar the push str method takes a string slice because you don't unnecessarily want to take ownership of the parameter for example in the code in listing 8-16 we want to be able to use s2 after appending its content to s1 if the push str method took ownership of s2 we wouldn't be able to print its value on the last line however this code works as we would expect the push method takes a single character as a parameter and adds it to the string listing 8-17 adds the letter i to a string using the push method as a result s will contain lol concatenation with the plus operator or the format macro often you will want to combine two existing string one way to do so is using is use the plus operator as shown in listing 8-18 note s1 has been moved here and can no longer be used okay the string s3 will contain uh, hello world the reason s1 is no longer valid after the addition and the reason we used a reference to h2 has to do with signature of the method that's called when we use the plus operator the plus operator uses the add method whose signature looks something like this in the standard library you will see add defined using generics and associated types here uh, we have substituted in concrete types which is what happens when we call this method with string values we will discuss generics in chapter 10 this signature gives us the clue we need to understand uh, the tricky bits of the plus operator first h2 has an ampersand meaning that we are adding a reference of the second string to the first string this is because of the s parameter in the add function we can only add an ampersand to a string we can't add two string values together but wait the type of ampersand h2 is ampersand string and not ampersand str as specified in the second parameter to add so why does listing 8-18 compile the reason we are able to use ampersand h2 in the call to add is that the compiler can coerce the ampersand argument ampersand string argument into an ampersand str when we call add method rust uses a differ coercion where which here turns into turns ampersand h2 into an ampersand h2 what is this uh, square brackets dot dot we will discuss differ coercion in more detail in chapter 15 because add does not take ownership of the s parameter h2 will be a valid string after this operation second we can see the signature that add takes ownership of self because self does not have an ampersand this means s1 in listing 8-18 will be moved into the add call and will no longer be valid after that so although let s3 equal to s1 plus ampersand h2 looks like it will copy both strings and create a new one this statement actually takes ownership of s1 appends a copy of the contents of s2 and then returns the ownership of the result in other words it looks like it's making a lot of copies but isn't the implementation is more efficient than copying if we need to concat concatenate multiple string the behavior of the plus operator gets unwieldy uh, at this point s will be tic-tac-toe uh, with all the plus and quote character is difficult to see what's going on for a more complicated string compiling we can use the format macro This code also sets h2 tic tac to the format macro works, works like a print ln but instead of printing the output to the screen it returns a string with the contents the version of the code using format operator uh, macro sorry is much easier to read and the code, code generated by the format macro uses 
references so that this call doesn't take ownership of any of its parameter indexing into string in many other programming languages accessing individual characters in string by referencing them by index is a valid and a common operation however if you try to access parts of a string using indexing syntax in rush you will get an error consider the invalid code in listing 8-9 this code will result in the following error the error and the note tells the story rush string doesn't support indexing but why not to answer that question we need to discuss how rush stores strings in memory a string is a wrapper over a vec u8 let's look at some of the properly encoded u utf8 example strings from listing 8-14 first this one in this case len will be 4 which means the vector storing the string hola is 4 bytes long each of this letter takes one byte when encoded in utf8 the following line however may surprise you note that this string begins with a capital cyrillic letter z e not the arabic number let hello equal to string from asked how uh, long the string is you might say 12 in fact rush answer is 24 that the that is the number of byte it takes to encode in utf8 because each unicode scalar value in that string takes two byte of storage therefore an index into the strings byte will not always correlate to a valid unicode scalar value to demonstrate consider this invalid rushed code you already know that answer will not be three the first letter when encoded in utf8 the first byte of 3 is 208 and second is 151 so it would seem that the answer should in fact be 208 but 208 is not a valid character on its own returning 208 is likely not what a user want if they asked for the first letter of the string however that's the only data rushed has at byte index 0 users users generally don't want the byte value return even if the string contains only latin characters if ampersand hello zeroth index were valid code that return the byte value it would return 104 and not h the answer then is to avoid returning an unexpected value and causing bugs that might not be discovered immediately rush doesn't compile this code at all and prevents misunderstanding early in the development process byte and scalar values and grapheme clusters oh my Another point about UTF-8 is that there are actually three relevant ways to look at string from Rush perspective as byte, scalar values, grapheme cluster, the closest thing to what we could call letters. If you look at the Hindi word Namaste written in the Devanagari script, it is stored as a vector of U8 values that look like this. That's 18 bytes and it's how computers ultimately store this data. If you look at them as unicode scalar values which are what rush care type is those bytes will look like this there are six care values here but the fourth and sixth are not letters they are diacritics that don't make sense on their own finally if you look at them as grapheme clusters we would get what a person would call the four letters that make up the hindi word Rust provides a different ways of interpreting the raw string data that compa that computer stores so that each program can choose the interpretation it needs no matter what the no matter what human language the data is, is in a final reason rush doesn't allow you to index into a string to get character is that indexing operations are expected to always take a constant time but it isn't possible to guarantee that performance with a string because rust would uh, have rust would have to walk through the contents from the beginning to the index to determine how many valid characters there were slicing string indexing into a string is often a bad idea because it's not clear clear what the return type of the string indexing operation should be a byte value a character a grapheme cluster or string slice if you really need to use <coughs> indexes to create uh, string slices therefore rush asks you to be more specific rather than indexing using uh, square brackets with a single number you can use square brackets with a range to create a string slice containing particular types here s will be 
ampersand str that contains the first four bytes of the string earlier we mentioned that each of this character was two bytes which means s will be 3a whatever this is uh, if we try to slice only part of a characters byte with some value like ampersand hello 0 to 1 rest would panic at runtime in the same way as if an invalid index were accessed in a vector you should use ranges to create string slices with caution because doing so can crash your program method for iterating over string the best way to operate on a pieces of string is to be explicit about whether you want characters or bytes for individual unicode character unicode scalar values using the car meth cars method calling cars on separates out and returns two values of type car and you can uh, char car whatever and you can iterate over the result to access each element this code will print the following 3a alternatively the bytes method returns each raw byte which might be appropriate for your domain this code will print the four bytes that makes up this string but be sure to remember that valid unicode scalar values may be up to may be made up to more than one byte getting grapheme clusters from strings as with devnagiri script is complex so this functionality is not provided by the standard libraries crates are available on crates.io if this functionality if this is the functionality you need strings are not so simple to summarize strings are complicated different programming languages make different choices about how to present this complexity to the programmer rust has chosen to make the correct handling of string data the default behavior for all rust program which means programmers have to put more thought into handling utf8 data upfront this trade off exposes more of the complexity of strings that is apparent in other programming language but it prevents you from having to handle errors involving non ascii characters later in your development life cycle the good is news is that the standard libraries offer a lot of functionality build of the string and ampersand str types to help handle this complex situation correctly be sure to check out the documentation for useful methods like contains for searching in a string and replace for substituting parts of a string with another string let's switch to something a bit less complex hash maps so we'll cover hash maps in next video thank you for watching bye